Well, um, I put a video on my YouTube channel to uh, show you my uh, test run of my high banker that I made. Um, I kind of wanted to go over the design of it and why I came up, um, did what I did with it, and how it works. As you can see, it's got a 48 inch wide or long 12 inch wide uh, sluice bed on it. I also have another 48 inch extension that I can put out here if I'm moving a lot of uh, material. But normally when I'm in the field and it's just me out there digging, there's no need for it because um, I'm only going to put maybe two, two and a half uh, tons of it through an hour if I'm just, you know, casually uh, digging. But if I take out um, some friends or my brothers, I will put a, an extension down through there, another 48 inches of sluicing bed. But basically what I did was um, I looked at a lot of uh, different sites, a lot of different designs um, for the high banker, and I went um, the poor man's route. I could afford to buy, I could afford to have bought one, but I decided, well, I think I can make one the way I want to make it. And so after a lot of research and looking at different high banking units and watching, uh, watching videos of it, I decided I'd make one from scratch. Um, I have a, a um, South Yuba high banker sluice combo with the uh, hopper uh, that sits on top of my other 12 inch sluice box. But I, uh, though it's a really well made um, unit, and it's uh, well put together. Did me a really good job for a couple years. I, I I just struggled with the the hopper design on, and not just on South Yuba, but on on any one of the the different um, hoppers. The uh, normal hoppers where you have the spray bars and the grizzly, and it seemed like I spent so much time cleaning the grizzly out, and I didn't feel like I was really getting a good washing on the rocks, no matter what angle I put my put my uh, my uh, grizzly at. So I decided to start from scratch and so this is what I came up with. Um, since I didn't have a metal bender, an aluminum bender that I could bend the metal with, I had to use on these corners here, I had to, I cut the metal to size and then I had to use um, angled angled aluminum. It's one inch angled aluminum. You've got to make sure that it's the it's flat on the inside and not rounded so that your corners fit together well. What I did is I went to a, a area, um, in, in my area, a materials distributor, and I just had them go in. You can do the same thing in your area too. And I had them cut me four pieces that were 12 by 24. This is um, the 12 gauge aluminum. It's really sturdy. Yeah, I think it's a yeah, 12 gauge. And it uh it re has really proven to work well. So what I did is I had him cut it, and I had to make some finishing cuts on the on the front of the hopper, and then I used the remainder for the back side of the hopper where the you can see the the uh, the PVC comes in for the water, and I I used it to build up the back of the high banker um, as a splash guard on the back. What I did was uh, the hopper design, it's 12 inches deep, it's 12 inches wide, and it is 24 inches long. And the back is 12 by 12 by 12. And the front here is just a, an 8, eight by 12 piece with the, hole in, the holes in it for this PVC unit that I use. I can either use a 1.5 inch. I can take this one and a half inch off and use a two inch pump, and I have both of those to utilize. I also drilled in some holes right here that my two and a half inch dredge um, nozzle can fit in. So if I want a dredge, I just unscrew these screws, as you can see right here. Unscrew those and screw in my, my uh, dredge nozzle adapter that I have for that position. So after I cut the pieces to the sizes that I want them, I, all I did was I took the uh, beginning with the bottom and working the sides into the bottom, and I, I, uh, I used a piece of angle iron over here on this, or angled uh, aluminum on this side, to hold it in place. I um, 
put silicone adhesive, two strips of silicone adhesive to the underside of the of the uh, aluminum that was going to come in contact with the angled aluminum and then I riveted it in. I used um, five thirty seconds rivets in here as you can see. Used these rivets and I riveted about every six inches on both sides. Then I put the walls in place on this side over here and again what I did is I I riveted it up down sealed it on the inside of this area here and then I placed rivets got to use some clamps I had to clamp it on place I did all by myself so it was kind of awkward at times but basically what I came up with in the finished product was a nice 12 by 24 inch box that's sealed and that I can pour a lot of material in very quickly and so that's what I was I was working for is that if I go out with some friends or my brothers or anybody that wants to go that I have something that that can move a lot of material real fast or something that I can just casually uh, put dirt in when I'm out on the when I'm out at my claim or at other sites that I go to here in uh, North Central Idaho. But I use this for more high production. If I'm using using smaller or lower production, um, I'll just use my, my mini excavator. And so what I did for the Grizzly system, it's a series of bars. Down here you can see these bars. And these bars are about, let's see if you can see it from behind. These bars are spaced a half inch apart. They're just steel rods that I cut to size. And I'll try to get a picture of it underneath here. And what I did is I just used two flat pieces of, of steel and then tack welded them and then it screwed in place. Um, I can move it back and forth, you know, for uh, half an inch. Um, but it's screwed in place and it's I have it set so that it has about an inch overhang on the back of the, of the um, breaker plate on the back of the sluice. Now the neat thing about this is is that the water, if you've watched the video, the water, when I have um, the the two inch pump hooked up to it, just churns up here. It's just a churning action and it really breaks stuff up. Another thing I really like about it is I don't get any clogs as the waters come from this area in here down through the grizzly. I don't get any clogs. The waters, the, the rocks just kind of vibrate off. I got this idea off the gold hog, monster hog, um, and it works great. Um, what I did also is I put a six inch bumper plate back here because you get a large volume of water. So I built this up to about six inches and then I added it to a sluice body that I got from from South Yuba Mining. And all I did was get the shell, just the 48 by 12 inch three inch high sluice bed shell. I didn't buy anything else. It was just just came from South Yuba this way. They they build really good products. I really like them. But I, and so I utilized it for uh, for my project. In order to get, lift my box up, I uh, took a two inch piece of flat aluminum on both sides and I I raised this up about a, uh, an inch and a half above the back and I offset the screw as you can see back um, toward the back end of the of the of the uh, hopper uh, so that it would have an you got to make sure that your grizzly comes over the top so that rocks aren't getting caught up in here and stuff and causing because the, the reason why you build it that way is so that it's hands-free and so that the rocks slide off so I I built this up uh, two inches above the back end and offset it and I put a couple holes in here if I want to move it back and forth so that's that's the the basic design of it now I built this so that everything can come apart and this top fits down inside the bed itself and I built it so that I could put it on my backpack uh, a five gallon bucket fits right in here into the into the devastation chamber the destruction chamber and I take, can take everything apart, the legs and everything, put it in the bucket. Um, I can also um, put inside the bucket anything else that I might want to carry down uh, to the, the, uh, the crick, the hoses that go to it that can fit in there. Um, and so you can pretty much put everything you need, disassemble this, 
put it onto a backpack, carry it into where you go because I usually pack in on my on my uh, my claim and other places that I go um, that it's um, off the the road, so I pack into it. And this is about 50 pounds, and I just I just pack it in. Now I made these legs out of one inch flat aluminum, and um, I put locking nuts on here because I want them to make tight, stay tight. And then I just put a series of holes. I, I uh, clamped these down on a jig and just used a one quarter inch. All my screws, everything is the same size. That's really important that you make everything the same size. So whenever I, I need a screw for up here or a screw for back here, wing nut, they're all the same size. The bolts, everything are the same size. So um, I did a test run with it. It ran really well. Now the legs are just uniform, universal, excuse me, legs that you can get off of um, most of the um, mining um, websites, you know, like... Uh, Oh, wild cat or black cat mining places like that. You can just buy these. Uh, I think they cost me like forty bucks. The whole unit in itself cost me about uh, about one hundred and fifty dollars. So that's well below. Uh, that's not counting the matting. The matting cost me another eighty dollars. So that's well below what you would pay for something like this on the market. So anyhow, also the the PVC piping that the water comes in. Um, just something I got. I got this at Home Depot. Um, just put it together. I have wing nuts to hold it in place. I, I have other extensions, like you've seen in one of my videos. I have the extension when I use my electric pump that comes clear out into here. When I'm using just a normal pump that's pumping out of the river, I use a two, a six and a half horse two inch pump, and I also have a two and a half inch horse uh, one and a half inch pump. I, I, I just use this shorter nozzle because you get such a nice volume of water just rushing in here and breaking things up. Now the sluicing area itself is is uh, gold hog matting um, and it's uh, 12 inches wide. It's hooked into place up at the top. You see that bar up there and I just have a, a bar um, with two wing nuts underneath that are underneath the body back there. You can see them back there. I just loosen those up, pop the bar up, and then the mat just simply slides out. Just a real easy operation. In fact, when I'm cleaning this mat out, it doesn't take you very long. You don't have to sit there and beat the carpet or beat the miner's moss. It took me a long time to um, actually have confidence in the gold hog matting. I know there's a lot of controversy out there. People you know, saying, well, I like miner's moss. Some people saying, I like carpet. I I did a lot of testing once I got the gold hog because I used a lot of miner's moss, riffles, expanded metal, things like that. Not saying anything against that, but I uh, did a lot of experimentation. I lose very, very little with this gold hog matting. I would lose, you know, upwards of, I'd find 10% in my tailings because I went through, um, would go through my tailings again. I lose maybe, maybe 1% with this. Very, very little losses. Um, this is uh, the punch plate that I use. I place this punch plate. Let's see. I can keep you going on my iPhone. Place it back up in here. Slide it right in there. The water comes down, flows underneath. It keeps that water flow really nice down through my ripples. And uh, and that's that's how I that's that's what I I do for this. Now, here comes one of the world's most beautiful young ladies here. For all of you, that's my daughter and my granddaughter. There's my girly. She's got milk on her mouth. Well, those are two loves of my life. The other two are running around here too. So two granddaughters, two daughters. If I would have known how much I would love grandkids, I would have had them first. So anyhow, this is how I have it set up. Um, um, it, it works really well. Um, taken out in the field and tested it. Uh, and... It, it, it has just, you know, been really impressed with um, how the setup works. I can't wait to get the extension that I'll use on down here when I put a little bit more higher production through. Um, I plan on running about, oh, probably 100 gallons of classified material through this. And the beauty of it is, is you can just shovel it in there. And it'll exchange out 
and you can run a hundred gallons or uh, which would be probably about two full yards of unclassified material but I've classified it down and you can run that through in almost no time at all um, I like to take my time because I like having fun doing it so uh, that's what I've got if you want any more information on how to build one of these, you know, you can uh, just drop me a note or a comment on it. I look forward to seeing what you, your comments on it. But this whole unit here, with the matting included, is somewhere between um, $200 and $225 that it cost me to build this. So, anyhow, um, I'll try to get you some videos of it when I take it out in the field under operation. And I'll try to use it different different conditions, extreme operation with the extension on the one end and just normal casual um, high banking. So that's how I, I built this. I uh, hope you enjoyed it and I'll talk to you later.